For Dr. Earl and her team, their time has come, their turn is at hand. This is an historic moment as the girls make ready to submerge and swim underwater 200 yards to the habitat. In an exclusive Screen News Digest interview, Dr. Earl recalls in her own words the highlights of the mission, including how her team was chosen. For participation in the Tektite program, selection was primarily based on a person's confidence in, in his field in science. And people were, scientists were asked to submit proposals, and those who are involved did submit proposals and were selected primarily on the basis of, of that. Secondarily, on their competence as divers, whether they could handle themselves well underwater. From the beginning, the girls show that they are on all counts well chosen and well qualified. Their journey to Tektite 2 is uneventful, but one by one they enter the Cadillac of habitats. Here for a fortnight, the girls are pioneers in the exploration of inner space, probing the secrets of a marine environment as mysterious, remote, and little known as the surface of the moon. And so they settle down with all the comforts of home. TV, radio, hi-fi, refrigerators, stove, and wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. The habitat is, in a sense, an aquarium in reverse, where fish swim by and observe human beings. Collecting specimens from the ocean floor, the girls work in pairs, venturing out as far as 1,500 feet from the habitat. And to keep from getting lost, they carry compasses and listening devices that home in on directional signals from Tech Type 2. Before the use of underwater habitats, divers had to work from and return to the surface. Expeditions to depths of 50 feet were limited to 90 minutes. Now with Tech Type 2 as a home base, scientists can put in a full eight-hour day. And in the habitat, specimens and samples can be catalogued and classified. Another very um, immediate advantage to a program of this sort is that you are in isolation. The distractions of topside activities are minimized. And this is highly productive. This is a fertile field for underwater exploration teeming with hundreds of species of marine life. People, for the first time, were shown to be able to work underwater in a way more or less comparable with working on land. And this is probably only possible using an undersea base, a habitat, and using some of the sophisticated new diving equipment, such as the rebreathers that enable people to stay in the water for long periods of time. Since the rebreather makes no air bubbles, Aquanauts can even swim among schools of fish. The unit, which cleans and recycles its air supply, also enables divers to stay outside the habitat for seven to ten hours. When you go in and out and see the same fishes, the same rocks, the same everything, uh, repeatedly, as a resident, you don't surface and get back to the ordinary day-to-day -day affairs of a human being. Your, your, your viewpoint changes and you begin to see things that, that are obvious once you've been there, but are not obvious unless you have this, this viewpoint, this vantage point. Science has taken a significant step in making men and women at home in the sea. Not only did we begin to feel as, as if we belonged in the environment, but it seemed that the fishes and other animals began to accept us with, with little or no concern, to take little, little notice of us as if we were a part of of the activities instead of some, an intruder. And so the girls roam the reefs, unlocking more and more of the secrets of inner space. The net result of the program demonstrated the effectiveness of saturation diving and habitat, the use of a habitat underwater as really an exciting new technique for undersea exploration. 
After two weeks, the Aquamaids agree that the only thing men can do down here that we can't is grow beards. Topside at the end of the mission, a pressurized transfer capsule is lowered into the water to ferry the girls from the ocean floor to a decompression tank on the surface. This is a delicate operation. For at a depth of 50 feet, the girls have been breathing a mixture of 92% nitrogen and 8% oxygen. A too rapid return to surface pressure will cause the nitrogen in their blood to bubble up like soda water in a newly opened bottle. This in turn will cause a painful and sometimes fatal condition known as the bends. <laughs> <laughs> 